Hi, it's Judy Westergaard Jenkins here. I hope you had a great time at SDP's Oceans of Color convention in Daytona Beach. I'm so happy that you were able to join me in the message from a, in a bottle class, but we do have some work to, to get finished. Uh, we were rather racing like a racehorse at the end of the class trying to get everything in. So I really want to review a couple of the steps we did on the seahorse. And um, of course, this is my finished piece with the seahorse. I want to show you one that I have partially started. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, and let's review some of the steps we did on this little fella. I used a quarter of an inch angle brush and I uh, loaded it with alizarin crimson and I went across at the top of the snout, up on the coronet, uh, and back a little bit to about the back of the head. I floated around the eye and across the cheek and made this little separation line between the neck and the head. I also floated right on this um, spiny area on the back. I floated a little bit of alizarin crimson down approximately to one or two of the spines below the dorsal fin. I went on the dorsal fin and behind either sides of the pencil. Then when it's dry you would go ahead and deepen the shading around the eye only with dioxazine purple. You'll also notice that I went to the pencil and put a nice white snow white reflection on the right half of the wooden portion of the pencil. Okay let's go on and take a look at our finished piece. Okay, scoot them up there a little bit. You can see I added spokes around his eye with a, a liner brush. I used both, um, I believe, Payne's Gray with possibly a touch of black um, and Snow White all the way around and then I also outlined that eye. Let's look a little bit closer at that. Okay, I think that shows fairly well. Then I went on to the body of the seahorse. Let me move this one more time so you can see it a little better. I went to the body of the seahorse with um, a liner brush and I put in coral shell lines all this area in the body to define all those um, their scales or rectangular sections. I basically took two lines down and then I went across the body and you can trace the lines on if you wish to from your pattern. But I tried to connect one spiny area to the next without going into these ruffled spiny areas. I just went across the body of the seahorse. Then within each of those little sections, I added shading, alizarin crimson shading across the left edge and the bottom edge of every single little section. Deepened it with dioxazine purple. And on a few, I went in with a little bit of coral shell and highlighted the upper right section on just a few of these uh, uh, areas that are close to the center of his body. I also went in to the spine tips and I highlighted the tips uh, using a liner brush or you could also use a, a small angle brush. But I went in and used coral shell and snow white in about equal parts and just 
went into each of those little tips and highlighted them. And I did that all the way on the front and the back side of the body. And be sure to pay some special attention to this uh, little tail as well. Then I added lots of dots on the face. Um, oh, let's back up one step. I did highlight the face with some coral shell plus snow white uh, right here at the bottom of the snout and right here. Um, then I went in with a small liner brush loaded with some thin coral shell plus snow white and I added tiny dots almost like freckles on the snout down below the eye in the highlighted area on the cheek and then I peppered them on the front of the body all the way down to this area and you notice I have them concentrated right in the center then I've got a few tucked here and there after that's done, I coated my seahorse with uh, extender and I padded primary yellow in about four areas. It forms a little bit of a stripe. If you pull your eyes out of focus, you can kind of see that. But pat those in and hit them with a mop brush so that they're really, really soft. Then if you need to, you can go back and add just a few more dots of white here and there. Okay, I have another one in progress, so let me show that to you. Get him angled so you can see him a little better. Okay, this is where mine was at the finish of the class. However, I have added the seaweed around uh, the seahorse, and I used Hauser Light Green. For that and I just left a couple to fill in and I like to use about a number one liner brush and I work from the tip of the leaf out towards or the base of the leaf out towards the tip and just fill those in let the brush do the work for you and then pull the stem in I'll have some tracing lines to replace or to get rid of in a little bit. But that helps set him in. This is a good time to do it. Um, because mine is nearly done, I have a few things that I uh, want to add to him. So I'm going to add a little bit of Daxazine Purple shading on that dorsal fin. There isn't enough on this one. So you'll want to place that on. You can just float it on. You can hit it with a mop if you need to. And I like to walk it out towards the tail a little bit. Um, I feel mine needs a little bit more shading around the eye. And I'm going to go right over what I've done already. Won't bother me. I should still be able to see all those light areas through. I think this one needs a, a touch more of a lizard crimson on this spiny area on the back. And a little of this can go a long way. If you get too much on, he'll look harsh. Just slope that down. Okay, I need to add a few more light areas on the front portion of these little tips. really makes them stand out from the water in the background. Adds a little more shape and form. Some of the smaller areas, I just run the highlight across the whole outer edge of that spine. Whatever it takes to get it to show up. And a little bit at that tip of the tail.
Okay. Let's go on to the pencil. I prefer to work on the pencil with a little bit of extender underneath. If you're great at floating, you can go ahead and just float this on. But I'm going to shade the very left edge of the pencil with Payne's Gray. And I might uh, pick up just a little tiny bit of Daxazine Purple. And I'm going to run this right along that very left edge. And you're going to have to stop and start so that you can pull this right down below the uh, tail. You may need to hit it with a mop. I'm pretty happy with what's happening here. I also feel I need a little put a little bit on the uh, tip of the pencil. Oops, the eye follow through. And then finally, I've got a nice strong shine on the right half. And I'm just I've picked up a little bit of Snow White on my angle brush and I'm using the chisel edge to pull that highlight down. I may need to clean up where I've gone through uh, some of the leaves I've base coated already. Okay, the final thing I want to do on the seahorse is emphasize the little um, spiny tips. I've got a little bit done here. You can see I've just pulled a little line down towards the body from the tip. And I really don't want them to go all the way through. I just want them to fade as it approaches the body. adds just a little more uh, rigidity to the piece. make some of the these little points stand out a little better, especially by that dorsal fin. Now this is a time that you can pump up any areas with a little bit more highlight, add a few dots. Um, I really want that tail to curl up a little bit, so I'm just going to brush a little bit of white at the tip of that tail. Makes that stand out and wrap around a little bit more. Um, I can highlight the wooden area of the pencil a little bit more. Okay, let's go on to the seaweed. I'd suggest using an angle brush and go ahead and shade all of those. And I'm going to shade each one with a little bit of light avocado. And I'll shade across the base. Know that if it's not a dark enough um, shadow for you, you can always pick up a tiny bit of black. I'm usually always painting with a second brush in hand to pick up the little boo-boos that I invariably always do. Sometimes I'll run the shading along the edge of, a, of the seaweed. Sometimes I just put it at the tip of the leaf. 
whatever I can do to create a little bit of random randomness. Especially shadow them where they come out from behind the seahorse. really starts to give them a little bit more shape. I oh, missed one right here. Okay, then I'll go ahead and I'll highlight just a few with olive green. And you can go ahead and add a little uh, primary yellow if you need to on a few. Uh, you could pick up a little bit of Snow White with your olive green. Whatever you need to do to create some randomness. And I like to go out and just few, choose a few tips to highlight. Now, not everyone needs a highlight. Just here and there. whatever you can do to make it look natural. Sometimes I like to place my highlights closer to my uh, center of interest, so I'm definitely going to do all of a highlight on all of these leaves. And I think I'm going to just pump up a little brighter on this one. You can see just little bits of uh, changing up your color. You know, you don't have to follow my instructions per se. If you feel that you need to uh, lighten an area, go ahead and pick up the next lightest value color in the same color family from your palette and lighten up an area. Okay, let's talk about the fish. Uh, let me pull in my original. And we're going to look at the little fish in the corner. When I designed these, all I could think of was Dr. Seuss's one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So I wanted to um, bring in that oceans of color theme. So I went from a red fish to an olive green to a hauser, um, a hauser green to a Payne's Gray and Payne's Gray and Dioxazine Purple. You just want them to gradually get darker. Um, I have asked you in the instructions to go ahead and to base these in on an extended background, and that's a little unusual. Um, the reason I do that is because I want these fish to just um, fade, 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 fade into the ocean. So we, of course, they're going to be um, brighter now before we have any color washes over them. But if you can uh, do something in advance that makes your work easier for you, this is one way you can do it. Um, the only problem is you may have to wait till they dry or dry them with a hair dryer and give them a second coat uh, using the same manner. Now, I've got mine all based in. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is I want to take one and show you how I lighten the belly. See, I've got this one done already. These two I want nice and dark because they're going to be very far away. This one I based in in Payne's Gray. So I'm going to pick up just a fly speck of white with my Payne's Gray and just give a little indication that there might be a belly on that fish. Sorry about the reflection there. Clean up the edge a little bit. And if you need to, you can hit it with a mop or I'm using a little deer foot stippler. 
And then each fish is going to have just a little dot of Payne's Gray or Payne's Gray with a touch of black for the eye. Of course, these last two fish, you're not going to see the eye because they're way down deep in the water. Okay, as soon as they're dry, I'll go ahead and um, do some of the bubbles around them. But in the meantime, let's talk about some of the bubbles that I have placed already. And I know some of you got to see this, but some of you left the classroom before you got to see this fun technique. Um, you can put the bubbles wherever you want. The only thing I'll caution you is that and they're kind of fun to do, so you want to be careful you don't place too many in. I'm going to place a couple of them in that I have up in this area. Um, and I might place one or two here. And notice I'm laying out extender in the area that I'm going to place a bubble. And remember, you don't want too much extender. Pat it with a towel if you get too much. And you're going to use the small detailer foam brush that you got in class. Um, this has a foam tip. It's much like um, something that you would apply makeup with. And I use these to make bubbles. I simply dip my brush into the tip of that brush into white paint. See that? And I'm going to place it, let's try this one first, place it straight up and down and I twirl it between my fingers and I pull up and that makes the bubble. Let's do another one. The harder the pressure, the bigger the bubble. Now this one is diffusing out just a little bit. I'm going to tap it with a mop. And of course I can go back and clean up an edge but it's a pretty quick and easy way to make bubbles. Again, just vary the size by the pressure, but always twirl your brush. It might take a little patience, or you might want to try a couple. You can always try, try them and wipe them right off if you don't like them. There, you can see that a little bit better. Little bubbles around the fish just by putting them here and there. I'm just using the stylus. Just be careful that you don't uh, make these too heavy or too strong. Now I need to let that dry before I can go on. Let's take a quick look at the stroke work that comprises the splashes um, and the accent on the underside of all the waves. I do this two different ways. I uh, can use paint or I can use chalk pencil. As much as I love stroke work, I'm not very proficient at doing it and I've been doing stroke works for 40 years. Every day is a challenge. Um, your brush is really important. I've got three different brushes here that you can see. Uh, this one's got a little paint in it already. It's one of my favorites to use. But it's really important that uh, you use a brush that you're comfortable with. I particularly like a brush that when it is dipped in water and flattened out almost looks like a filbert brush. And uh, Everybody has their own choice of size. I usually use about a number three. Um, I might switch down if I've got a little bit smaller stroke to do. I might go to a two and sometimes up to a five. This, a two or a three will easily do these strokes. Now let me show you how I load my brush. Since our strokes on our project are going to be done in white, it's kind of hard for me to demonstrate on the white background, so I'm going to show you with uh, just a little bit of color here. And I'm just going to stroke this on my palette. Now, 
I pull my puddle of paint off to the side with a small amount of water with it. Now, you've got to get your paint just to the right consistency. I'd say mine is almost like a half and half or um, a thin cream. And when I load my brush, the bristles come up and stay rather flat. Then I go to my surface, I touch, I press, lift, and pull. And I use my hand to pull the stroke off of the surface. Touch, press, lift, and pull to a fine point. Notice I'm not rolling that brush around in my hand. I'm stroking it. Let's try it again. Touch, press, lift, and pull. Before I do stroke work, I really like to do a practice session. I may sit and practice for five to 10 minutes onto a piece of paper before I go to my surface, uh, just to get that rhythm going in my mind. The more strokes I do, usually the better they become. So go ahead and play with strokes a little bit before you go to your finished piece. Okay, I'm going to get out my piece here and I'm going to start on a few strokes to the right of the bottle. I've got a couple right here. I'm going to use my number three round brush and I like to keep my palette pretty close by when I'm doing strokes and I always like to pull the stroke towards myself. Again, loading that brush. A little bit of pink in there to get out. Be careful that you don't pick up a bead of water onto the ferrule. Sometimes I've been doing strokes and all of a sudden the gravity pulls Pulls one drop right down. Okay, I usually always start with the larger stroke. And I'm going to touch, press, lift, and pull. One to the second. And notice, I just use my stroke, uh, my um, tracing lines as a guideline. I don't necessarily stay perfectly with them. I try to keep the relationship of one stroke to the other in mind. Let me move this a little bit more. Again, always constantly rotating so I can pull that stroke toward myself. Sometimes I allow the strokes actually to come together. And I've got a little one right here. Hardly any pressure at all. Okay, you can go ahead and complete your um, stroke work splashes using this method, but I want to show you how I use a chalk pencil. This is something I uh, got into when I was doing lots of chalk lettering for my book, Chalk It Up, and I really recommend General's Charcoal White Pencil. Um, it's what works the best for me. I've tried every pencil that it, there is out there in the marketplace, and I always come back to this one. Um, a fine point is important, and a kneadable eraser is important. There are also other erasers out there you can find, like this Tombow um, Mono Zero eraser that has a fine tip. You can go in and get rid of a line somewhere you don't, where you don't want it. But 
I basically start with a sharpened um, pencil and let's try right up here. I'm going to keep my hand out of my wet strokes. And the first thing I do is I outline the stroke and then I go in with a scribbling motion and I fill in the entire stroke. And I'm not going to worry too much about uh, anything that gets on an edge because if I don't like it, I can just clean it up with water. I'm going to start in the center and I think I'll finish out all the way down to the tip of this stroke. Then I'm going to fill again with little tiny circular motion. I can widen this up at the top edge a little more. Now this one I've really traced on rather wonky, so I'm just going to use it as a guide but create my own shape so it's a little nicer. Another one here. And I rather like the look of this. Place another one on. It's a little bit larger. And again, really scribble that in. Anything you don't like, uh, say for instance, I put something off to the side that I didn't like. I would simply take a large point or small point blend. See, this is a really um, short, round brush that has layered bristles. And I can use that. You could also use um, a small liner brush. A short bristle brush would be better. And your water has to be perfectly fresh and clean. And look, at you can just take that off or shape the stroke to as perfect as you want it kind of nice. Okay, I'm going to go back and as long as this is dry, I'm going to go in and place another stroke in. Here I've got a bubble already, so I'm just going to work around it. Now, I know some people don't like the chalky look. I'm used to it. I like the look of it. But I'm going to show you what you can do to soften it. There's a couple of different methods you can use. You can use a little mop or a deerfoot stippler and just touch the area and you'll get a little bit of chalk dust off here and there. Or you can use that small detailer foam brush that you got in class. Of course, after I was done with the bubbles, I cleaned it up with some soap and water and dried it off. So I can use it another way. I can go in and I can smudge a stroke. Oh, let's try one that I haven't smudged already. See how nicely that softens that? Look at the difference between one that's, that's softened and one that isn't. It's all up to the individual. What happens when you soften it this way, and I will just touch this onto a dry paper towel to get any chalk dust off. I'll want to go in and clean up any of that smudged edge with fresh water. Of course, I'll have a tracing line or two to get rid of, too. Sometimes those come up with water. Sometimes I simply have to use a little eraser. That one came out pretty good. Okay, you can really see the difference on that softened stroke over the rest of the ones that I have here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and touch all of them just lightly. Clean them again. And if you don't have this brush, don't worry about it. Go ahead and uh, use a small round brush or a liner brush. Even a, a good angle brush might work for you. I'll come in here with chisel edge of a flat brush and show how I can clean up really well with that too. Okay, let's not forget we have some splashes or accents on the inside of a wave. And I'm going to start at, at the tip of the wave and just go all the way along the edge. Sometimes I'll even outline a bubble, especially some of the larger ones. And soften them in. So you can see there's lots of different different ways you can do stroke work. It's all about achieving a specific look. Now we know if you don't like that uh, chalking you can take it right off with fresh water. Use a spray product called Workable Fixative by Krylon to permanently affix the chalk lines to your surface. First, you must remove all the tracing lines. Uh, I use either a Tombow eraser or a kneaded eraser. You can also use a clean paint thinner to remove the lines. After the lines are removed, you'll want to hold the spray can at a 45 degree angle over your work and lightly waft the spray, then allow it to dry. I put a few drops of extender onto my background and I'm using a two inch blue, uh, blue ice oval wash brush and I'm just putting this all over the outer two to three inches of my sprayed finished painting. We'll pretend it's finished. A little bit more extender in the lower section. Work it all the way around. You'll see there's a little different shine when the extender is on the surface when under the camera. Whatever you do, do not overdo the extender. Extender is simply to, to extend the time that it takes for your painting to dry. It does not extend the paint and make it go farther. It extends your time. Okay. Now, I'm touching the bottom portion of my painting and you can see my finger is just almost looks oily. That means I have too much extender on. Too much extender and your painting might not ever dry. So I'll take a paper towel and take away the excess so that my surface just looks shiny. It should not look dripping and really, really wet. Okay, I'm going to use the same brush that I have some extender in from placing on the background, or the uh, extender, and I'm going to pull the excess off onto my paper towel and I'm going to dip my brush, one corner of my brush, into phthalo blue. That is a traditions color. If you don't have this color, you could use uh, some Prussian blue as well. And I'm going to go up to the corner, and I'm going to start 
going across the corner. Wow, that color really pops, doesn't it? And because this is wet, I'm allowed to work on it. So I'm going to go across the top of the sky, soften as I go, and I'm going to pull this color right down over the edge of the wave and right down to the fish. And I'm going to paint this color right over the fish so that they just drop into the background of the water. Pull it up softly. And I might pick up a little bit of Prussian blue on my brush to further deepen the corners, the lower corners only, and to pull that right over those fish. So they just, I want them to just kind of disappear. I don't want them to be the focus. I want the viewer to look at those after they've looked at everything else. Now you need to be working on this when it's wet. If it starts to uh, dry on you, you might need to pick up a tad bit more extender on your brush. Then I'll go back with a large mop brush and soften it. So I don't want any hard, harsh lines. You can see how nicely that softens in the sky area. Once you have this the way you want it, you're going to need to let it set aside and dry. You can see I've gotten my dark coloring all the way around the outside edge and I'm just continuing to mop it so that it's soft. Again, I just want it to be very, very gradual as the color comes in all the way from around the outside edge of the sky. There's one last little thing I want to show you and that's the um, shadowing that you'll see on the tag and I use the color coral blush and I have some thin Donna liner brush and I'm going to go along the left and the lower edge of each part of the letter and this just uh, outlines the letter a little bit. Of course you'll need to do this only after you have um, have fixed, permanently fixed your letters in place. And I just pick it apart, decide where the letter stops and starts. It just makes it a little easier to see, finishes it off a little nicer. Let's take one last look at the finished project. Uh, you can see I have done a little bit of double stroking on a couple of the uh, comma strokes here and there. I may have added a couple bubbles here and there. There's a little bit of line work. Um, I've enjoyed doing this project with you. I hope that you've had a good time and will be able to get your project finished now. If you have any questions at all about anything in the class or anything that I can help you with, please feel free to contact me at jkwestegard at aol.com. That's all on your written instructions. Also, if you really need help, don't be afraid to snap a picture with your phone or your iPad 
and send it to me via email and I will help you um, solve that problem or I can give you a critique, whatever I can do to be of help. Thanks again to SDP for allowing me to be the convention artist. I wish I would have had more time to spend with all of you and I hope to see you down the road. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a great day.